What if our most fundamental story, the story of where we come from, is not a tapestry, but an erratic patchwork so tangled that it conceals the true pattern of our origins? Geneticist David Reich's bold proposition is that our standard model of modern human evolution, built through successive patches and epicycles, are fundamentally flawed, increasingly implausible, and of low probability. With that unsettling idea, David Reich strikes at the heart of scientific humility, suggesting that our cherished narrative of modern human evolution has been pieced together through a series of genetic patches, an accretion of adjustments each applied to preserve an increasingly unstable framework. This image could not be clearer than when he says, the model that we have is really a model based on accretion. We start with the modern humans, and then we add the Neanderthals once we obtain those sequences. We add the Denisovans, and then the model doesn't quite fit, and we add other mixture events to make the model fit. Reich invokes a metaphor as hauntingly apt as any in the history of science, likening this process to the ancient Ptolemaic system that added epicycles upon epicycles to make things fit, when the underlying theory was in fact flawed. He asks us to consider whether, in our rush to patch discrepancies, we have missed the possibility that the truth lies not in epicycles, but in a fundamental overhaul of the model itself. In Reich's own words, at this point, there's a number of these mixture events that seem increasingly implausible. The models that are considered to be standard dogma are now low probability. There's a standard dogma that's developed over an accretion of papers where the history gets patched. Someone sequences a genome. Someone performs an analysis. Someone proves something that wasn't known before. We claim a mixture event we didn't know about before, an event that we didn't know about before. That gets patched onto the current model, which is now a series of patches. Nobody has really rethought the whole thing very hard. Models that are considered to be standard do dogma are now low, low probability. Yeah. So there's a standard dogma that's, uh, that's developed over an accretion of papers where the data, the, the history gets patched. So someone sequences a genome, someone performs an analysis, someone proves something that wasn't known before. And so they, we claim a mixture event. We didn't know about it before, an event that we didn't know before. And that gets patched onto the current model, which mm. is now a series of patches. The standard genetic model envisions that modern humans separated from a common ancestor shared with Denisovans and Neanderthals roughly 500 to 750,000 years ago, and that theory remains the primary explanation for the majority of DNA lineages in the field. That picture, derived from genome-wide analyses, has been foundational since around 2012 to 2014, but has a probability of only 5% according to the studies themselves. Reich explains this neat separation is contradicted by analyses of mitochondrial DNA and the Y chromosome, both of which suggest that the common ancestors of Neanderthals and modern humans lived only 300 to 400,000 years ago, which is significantly more recent than the genealogical estimate derived from the autosomal genome. He emphasizes that Denisovans appear much more ancient, perhaps 700,000 to 1 million years, diverged in those uniparental markers. Reich crystallizes the tension with chilling clarity when he says, so the story told by these two parts of the genome is really different from the rest of the genome and incompatible with the main story. He goes on to describe how, in light of these disparities, some geneticists have invoked epicycles analogous to those of Ptolemaic astronomy, selective sweeps that favor modern human mitochondrial or Y-chromosomal variants in Neanderthals, perhaps, or rare drift events. But these explanations seem increasingly implausible when required to work simultaneously across unlinked genomic regions. Reich observes that even granting that both parts of the genome might owe their lineage to modern human to Neanderthal gene flow events, the probability of that happening by chance is only 5% squared, which is vanishingly small, yet it is still invoked. He pushes further by considering far more radical scenarios in which large proportions, perhaps 30, 50, or even 70 percent, of Neanderthal DNA derived from modern humans. Such a scenario would render the very terms archaic and modern ambiguous, because in that view, Neanderthals and Denisovans are not sisters. In fact, modern humans and Neanderthals are just as qualified to be sisters as Neanderthals and Denisovans. 
and the distinction between archaic and modern humans would dissolve entirely. What Reich offers here is not a reform of the model, but an invitation to start anew, to abandon the piecemeal approach in favour of thinking through whether a very different model, completely disentangled from the stale dogma of branching lineages, might better explain the data. He declares that nobody has really rethought the whole thing very hard, and that it is possible to reassemble the picture in new ways, unpolluted by the constraints of prior consensus. Evidence from research beyond his own laboratory lends weight to this challenge. The revolution in ancient DNA research has begun to expose discrepancies between genetic reconstructions and prior archaeological models with startling bluntness. As reported by Science magazine in 2015, ancient DNA is adding layers of complexity to the story of how ancient populations migrated and mixed across the globe. Reich explains how findings in ancient DNA, many generated by Reich's lab, have contradicted prevailing views, showing, for instance, that the spread of farming did not purely reflect the spread of ideas, but involved actual migration of people and profound admixture events. In the words of one archaeologist, Before 2010, I didn't know anything about DNA, and the technique has since become for archaeology nearly what radiocarbon dating is for chronology, prompting a shotgun marriage between disciplines as varied as archaeology, linguistics, and population genetics. The core theme of Reich's argument is precisely this overturning of narratives that presume clean genetic legacies. He argues that virtually all human populations today are hybrids, the products of multiple migrations and layers of admixture. That fact of recurrence that any land we think of as having a single ancestral origin turns out to be wakes of repeatedly interwoven genetic histories, is the substrate on which he builds his case that we must rethink our evolutionary models entirely. This deeper complexity echoes older alternative models to the out-of-Africa replacement narrative, such as the multi-regional hypothesis. That hypothesis, often viewed as an outlier, posits ongoing gene flow across continents over nearly two million years, it holds that archaic humans such as Homo erectus, Neanderthals, Denisovans and modern humans belong to a continuous species evolving regionally, yet connected through gene flow. The standard summary of the multi-regional hypothesis notes that advocates stress clinal variation and regional continuity preserved through gene flow, pointing out instances of shared traits across widely separated populations alongside evidence of admixture. Genetic evidence from the multi-regionalist camp suggests, for instance, that Y-chromosome and certain chromosomal regions show ancient coalescence times inconsistent with simple recent replacement, and that gene flow between Africa and Eurasia has occurred numerous times, some as early as two million years ago, contradicting any clean break in ancestry. That vision maps remarkably well onto the kind of braided, layered complexity Reich now urges us to embrace. Taken together, Reich's equivocation about the modern versus archaic labels, his admonition that we have been building a model through patches rather than rethinking, and evidence from both his laboratory and the wider field make a compelling case. He insists that acknowledging complexity is not intellectual capitulation, but scientific honesty. He challenges his peers and readers alike to imagine what human evolution might look like if we jettisoned dogma and began reconstructing narratives from scratch allowing expectation to follow patterns rather than forcing patterns to obey expectation. Beyond the purely intellectual, the stakes of this re-evaluation also touch on ethics and identity. Reich is sharply aware of the historical misuse of genetics to support ideologies of purity, and he maintains that revealing the ubiquity of mixture undermines those misuses. Honesty in the human story repudiates racism not through ideology but through evidence. When even the most ostensibly local population turns out to be a layered tapestry of global ancestry, claims of unbroken, pure lineage evaporate. In closing, Reich's proposition that the current patched models of human evolution may hide deeper truths requiring a complete overhaul is no speculative fringe argument. It is a challenge rooted in the weight of genetic discrepancies, spurred on by the disruptive impact of ancient DNA on archaeological paradigms, and consistent with broader theories that saw human history as interwoven from the start. 
the appeal to ditch patchwork in favour of building from foundational principles calls for a paradigm shift, one that is both methodologically rigorous and philosophically expansive. The question he leaves us with is as humbling as it is exhilarating. Can we allow ourselves to discard epicycles and rebuild, face down the tangled truth that our origin might be far more networked and interdependent than we have dared to believe? That may be the real legacy of Reich's work, his invitation to rethink everything. Even Chris Stringer, who has been the leading proponent of the recent Out of Africa theory, stated in a video interview, At the moment, I'm looking again at the whole question of a recent African origin for modern humans, the leading idea over the last 20 years. This argues that we had a recent African origin, that we came out of Africa, and that we replaced all of the other human forms that were outside of Africa. But we're having to re-evaluate that now because genetic data suggests that the modern humans who came out of Africa about 60,000 years ago interbred with Neanderthals, first of all, and then some of them later on, interbred with another group of people called the Denisovans over in southeastern Asia. If this is so, then we are not purely of recent African origin, we're mostly of recent African origin, but there was contact with these other so-called species. We're having to re-evaluate the out-of-Africa theory, and we're having to re-evaluate the species concepts we apply.